Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are at the MSI booth and MSI did sponsor us to come over here, so big thanks to them. And we have a lot of products to check out. You excited, Tim? I'm very excited. Tim is pumped, can't wait. So before we get into it... The Harbour Unboxed Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI and Thermal Grizzly. Check out MSI's all new gaming slim graphics cards. They're thinner and lighter, allowing for hassle-free compatibility and installation, while still delivering award-winning performance that MSI is known for. Included is the latest Trifroza 3 cooler in either black or white using Torx 5.0 fans, a nickel-plated copper base plate with up to 8 core pipes to ensure optimal heat dissipation and ultra-quiet operation. Enjoy ray tracing and DLSS 3 with NVIDIA's ADA architecture and tap into elite-level system responsiveness through Reflex, giving you the competitive edge where it matters in-game. Learn more about the all-new MSI GeForce RTX 40 series gaming slim graphics cards via links in the description. Also, supporting our Computex trip is Thermal Grizzly and their new Cryo Sheet, a high-performance graphene thermal pad that contains no liquid and therefore isn't subject to the kind of degradation seen with traditional thermal pastes, such as drying out, for example. It offers outstanding thermal connectivity, simple installation, and extreme longevity. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. All right, guys, we're going to start with a prototype board that is nailed down, so I can't actually pick it up, but we'll get some B-roll of it for you. It has a new CU dim, which is really interesting. It almost looks like a mobile dim. It is a DDR5 dim. And the advantage of this is shorter traces. That's right. Yep. So that allows higher frequencies. It's, an, it's in conjunction with Intel that they've developed this so far. So yep. no specifications given or frequencies, but we've just told it will be bigger and better. Yep. So that said, like, the connector is physically smaller. So it's a bigger and better design, <laughs> yep. theoretically, but the connector is physically smaller, which I guess allows them to do more things on the motherboard potentially. Yes, and while we're talking of interesting memory, we might as well, I'll pick this up. Um, this is the new Project Zero ATX board. So you're probably familiar with the uh, micro ATX versions. Yeah. The new ATX board, pretty crazy. It's coming with yeah. the cam too that we've seen leaked leading up to Computex. This is actually a production board that you're about to buy with the CAM2 memory module, which has a whole heap of benefits. Do you want me to hold it? You, you can, can, you can take talk it, of it. Well, You I'll, can I'll take, take it off. off, yeah. So pull that off and, oh, that's already undone. Yep. So they've got a neat custom heat sink for it, which you'd probably peel the plastic off when you're using it. Um, but there's the CAM2 module, and that's made in conjunction with Kingston at the moment. Yep. So again, because it's a more compact design, shorter traces, you'll get higher frequencies. They're aiming for 8400 as the highest frequency with the Intel platform, providing your CPU's memory controller can handle that, but maybe you'll have a greater chance with the CAM2 module of hitting those frequencies. So that's really neat. And on the back side of the board, you can see the CAM2 bracket, which helps avoid flexing and bending and stuff like that on the PCB with higher coolers. And there's some thermal pads there, so it'll probably extract heat out of the back side of the module. So really good cooling there, which is really important for DDR5 memory. Another great advantage of this is the CAM2 module, which obviously comes off the board and you can add different capacities and, and frequencies and things like that. The actual, I suppose, interposer between the module and the motherboard, which is a, like a LAN grid array type connection. We know they can be easily damaged by seeing what happens with CPU sockets, but that part can actually be replaced on the board. So it's a separate bit that you can lift off. It connects to the pads on the motherboard and then the pads on the backside of the CAM2 module. So really cool, if that gets damaged, easy to replace. And I, I don't know about pricing on those particular bits, but I don't imagine they'll be too crazy, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> Another new feature that MSI are uh, releasing on their boards after Computex for the, I believe it's the AMD and Intel 800 series boards, is the Easy Clip 2. So you simply pull that back and the module will pop out. Like that, I don't want to drop it. Uh, so that's pretty neat. And you just push it down, it pops back in. It's pretty awesome. So it is called the yeah. M.2 Easy Clip 2. So you got that, Tim? Yep, I have got that. And apparently that will be on all of the new boards from uh, MSI. So whether you're getting high end, right down to the low end stuff, you'll be able to get at least one SSD slot that will have that connector, which I think is a much better design than the flip around things that we've seen, other awkward clips. This seems to be the most easy to use version of this that I've seen. That's right, it's like a 360 degree connector. So yeah. whereas the plastic had to have it oriented in the correct yeah. direction to pop the drive in, this, it doesn't matter. So it'll just... So easy. You just wriggle yeah. it and it works. And then I think putting it in is even easier because you just push the drive down and it latches yeah, it's in. it's nice. Very nice. So great for installation. Yeah. And then we've got a little shield here covering a socket with a unspecified amount of 
maybe 1800 and something pins, not sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, MSI strictly cannot show that, so yeah. But it's an arrow lake. It's an arrow lake yeah, motherboard, yeah. next generation CPUs, probably 15th generation. But yeah, interesting. Also added to the full range of MSI motherboards is the easy PCIe release. So you just simply push that down and it locks. So if you click it down, it'll lock out. Push it down again, it goes back in the locker card into place. So no needing to finger around in there no, trying to and, press that thing. And when you push it in, it doesn't have to then enable it. You simply just do it again. So that's really good. And another cool feature is all of the boards, the entire range now, come with the pre-installed IO shield, which is something you know, we've wanted to see for a long time. So MSI has delivered there. Seems yeah. like a small detail, but it's probably the thing I'm most excited about. Yeah. So when you buy those low end, more affordable boards. Yeah, and to... it's not just for Z series and X series, it's the whole for range. future lower tier chips. And there's also the easy antenna. So no longer do you have to screw the antennas in and jumble up yeah. the cables and risk damaging them. They just pop straight in and that works really easily. As Tim's my, uh, it's going to demonstrate. Two, my done. assistant here. Done. done. It's that easy. I'll put this down before I drop it. And we also have the new expander card, the M.2 expander card. Looks very much like the old expander card, doesn't it? But it is all new, all improved, a number of important changes here. And the coolest thing is it is hot swappable. So your M.2 drives are gonna kind of work like external USB storage if you want them to. There is a little tab on the back here. If you turn that, it opens these doors and out slides your M.2 tray. And that is completely hot swappable. Yep, and full heatsink in there too. Nice for, yep. obviously, high performance drives. Yep. And then you just shove them back in like this. Slide it in. Clip it down. Clip it down. And you can open the other side as well. So, yep. or you can open them. But Well, I think it's one at a time you open them at. But yeah, that probably makes sense because when you open one, you don't want the other one to accidentally come out. Yep. You want to be very targeted in which one you yep. remove. <laughs> okay, now we've found the new AM5 boards, the new X870 boards. So yes. I won't call them X670, at least not That's more That's never than once. happened in any take so far. Won't happen, X870, and these aren't the E models. So we found out that the E models, just same as the previous generation, they have two chipsets, so more PCIe lanes, more connectivity. But these are just the standard models. We have the Tomahawk Wi-Fi and the P, so dash P as I often call it, Wi-Fi, which is the more sort of entry-level board. The cool thing about the Tomahawk is, so it has a 14 phase 80 amp V core. So plenty of power delivery there as you'd probably expect from a Tomahawk yep. board. And it has all the neat new features. So yeah. quick release uh, M.2s, the quick release on the uh, PCIe slot, the primary yep. slot. We've been told that all boards with Wi-Fi this generation will have Wi-Fi 7 on yep. board. So that is for both the AMD and Intel boards, which is nice. Yep, AMD and also Intel. for the higher tier boards, apparently all of them now come with the debug LEDs, which has been a highly requested feature yep. from the enthusiast community. And if you get the more entry level boards, there's still an LED readout. So either way, you go high end, you get a obviously more premium readout, but you should be able to at least debug everything on all the models, which is great. And that's the case for both uh, Intel and AMD. Yep, so the, yeah, debug LEDs on the base boards, and then yeah, you get the actual uh, sort of number readout. Yep. Um, so that, that's good. Uh, and we've also got the quick, easy access Wi-Fi as well. Yep. And just lastly, a new board feature is they have a header, forget the exact name of it, but essentially what this small header does is allow you to connect MSI's new all-in-one liquid coolers straight to the header with one cable that will power all the fans, control all the ARGB, power the pump, do all of the stuff that the AIO needs to do to work through one cable. So that's very cool. If you buy an MSI uh, all-in-one liquid cooler uh, and you don't have an MSI motherboard or an MSI motherboard with this new header, it also works through the USB-C onboard header. Presumably your board will have that. Yeah. So that's pretty neat, one cable. All right, Tim, it looks like we have found quite the graphics card. Would you like to uh, tell us how it's pronounced? Well, I believe it is Fusion. 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 MSI tell us, tell us it's Fusion. Yes, but, um, but it, it's not sure, spelt that way. Not sure on the spelling. It's meant to be the Supreme Fusion, but we think it's the Supreme Fusion. Regardless, it is massive. So it's a chunky boy. It's. Uh, the, I'm not sure if it's a four slot or a four and a half slot, but it's. It's big. It's it's slightly over four slots, so you might as well call it a five slot. Absolutely huge graphics card for this 4090. Now it is. 
or it does include an all-in-one liquid cooler, which is an interesting design because it doesn't look like it has an all-in-one liquid cooler, does it? It looks... It does. Until you look closely and you sort of see a the few radiator. little hints of a radiator and a pump and things. But I think last Computex we saw the prototype version of this and now it's coming to an actual production model, is that right? Well, I believe so. This looks very production-like. It does, yes. Can't confirm exactly if it will be something that you can purchase. But yeah, all-in-one liquid cooler, a, a compact pump, all of that sort of stuff in this... I say compact and it's, it's nearly five compact. slots. No, no. Compact for an all-in-one. Yeah. Normally when you see an all-in-one liquid cooler, it'll have an external radiator like this thing up here. Yeah. With pump uh, yeah, yeah. tubes connecting, tubes, you know, yeah. the pump to the radiator and all that sort of stuff. We don't have that here. It's an all-in-one solution. How beneficial that is, is hard to say because you're not dumping the heat from the GPU out of the case. Not yeah. sure, we'll have to test that one, see how effective it is at cooling the graphics card and then you know, that, all that heat dumped in the case for the rest of the components to deal with. I'll be very keen to test it out if we end up seeing that at retail. Sure. All right, Tim and I have found another Supreme Fusion or Supreme Fusion graphics card. Yep. This one is an RTX 4080. More compact, I think it is fair to say. Yeah, it's definitely more compact. It's only three and a little bit slots. Yep. So, I don't know if that's particularly compact. I guess it is compact for a 4080 Super. Yeah, you'd say it's in the ballpark of other GPUs sure. of that sort of series. So, again, this does include an all-in-one liquid cooler. It's, I think it's a 128mm radiator, yep. slimline pump, all within the same graphics card. So there's no tubing coming out of it to dump all that heat out of the case. So, again, how beneficial that is, how well that works. We've never tested anything like it before, yeah. at least that I recall. We'll get our hands on it, test it out. It looks pretty nice, especially with the flow through design. It's got design a pull through design, fans. so it's sort of like how the FE cards work. Yeah, yeah, that's One right. One fan sucking air in through the radiator, pushing yeah. it across the card, and then there's another yeah. fan extracting it. So, yeah, it looks like it's pulling down and going out that way. Yep. Uh, but yeah, again, something pretty interesting, we'll have to check it out. Now, here's a quick look at a prototype product designed to improve SSD operating temperatures without having to use a massive heatsink. MSI is calling this the Spatium Non-Metal Vapor Chamber SSD Thermal Solution, so sure, okay. Uh, I think the key takeaways here though being that MSI claims that it performs well, it's a lightweight design, uh, certainly much more so than the massive air cool heat sinks that we've seen in the past. It's also significantly more compact, and yes, it does look very cool, which I kind of sense might have been a priority here. Anyway, it's a concept design that probably won't come to market by the sounds of it, but if it does work as MSI claims, I think it would be a shame not to see it at retail, as I'd personally love to check it out. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our coverage of the MSI booth Computex 2024. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out those new motherboards, the new graphics cards that may or may not be coming to market. And what else do we see, Tim? We saw... This interesting SSD sort of cooler yes. thing. Not sure what's happening with well, that. Well, again, another item that may or yep. may not be coming to market. So yep. we'll have to wait and see on that one. Anyway, yep. thanks, guys, for watching. And we'll catch another video very soon.